say it's to protect you while they try to dispossess you of the right to decide between wrong or right to openly discuss with politicians hide they want to keep their secret plans from the public eye we gotta keep our fire burning keep our spirits bright we gotta rise up rise up rise up rise up people against the war rise up people against the war rise up people against the war rise up people money got no children and bombs ain't for building Killing ain't no way to make a peaceful day As all of God's children can easily explain We gotta keep our fires burning, keep our spirits bright Stand up and speak for what we know is right We gotta rise up, rise up, rise up Rise up people against the war Rise up people against the war Rise up people against the war Rise up, people, I see days ahead, kiss my children into bed, all across the planet I see that everything is fine, yeah, rise up, people, Rise up people against the war Rise up people against the war Rise up people We have the power and the will and We'll do it for our children Put the warmongers and the corporate whores In the history books with the dinosaurs I claim my power, I claim my rights And no dirty tricks are gonna change my mind I'm gonna rise up Rise up, rise up Rise up, rise up, rise up Rise up people against the war 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 Rise up people against the Hello, this is uh, Dan with the Veterans for Peace Forum. Uh, I'm with uh, VFP Chapter 72 here and uh, with the National Board uh, in, on our National in St. Louis. Um, we do this program every uh, fourth Saturday of the month, and I want to welcome you here. We have a busy program today. I have uh, a number of guests. Uh, first guests are going to be uh, Jorge Parra uh, and uh, Paige, um, who is uh, going to be interpreting for us. And Paige has been with the uh, Portland Central American Solidarity Committee and Witness for Peace and has been touring uh, uh, with uh, Jorge to, to interpret and, and introduce him to the community to talk about his various issues. Um, and we're also going to later in uh, the other half of the program, we're going to have Alicia Jackson, who is becoming uh, notorious in the sense that uh, it's a big issue about foreclosure in this nation. And since uh, May of this year, uh, people have occupied and, and put her back in her home as they try to evict her out and we want to talk to her. I just found out that she was a veteran and uh, uh, very appropriate to have her on here as many veterans are becoming forced out of their homes, uh, not getting jobs uh, and homelessness uh, on the streets with a number of other issues. Uh, this is uh, grand to see uh, um, not only that she's taking on this fight but that uh, she's a veteran taking on this fight. Um, so I want to start off and just introduce you to Jorge who uh, I, I think I just talked to him uh, here recently, saw him at, uh, at the Multnomah Friends Meeting House on October 18th, where he gave a little talk to people there. And uh, I'd asked him to come on the program to talk about it. I just want to let you know that, you know, in the past, uh, I was telling him that I myself was an injured worker um, back in 
1986, somewhere around there, and uh, uh, and was involved with my union as an activist and, and uh, creating uh, uh, Oregon Injured Workers Day with the AFL-CIO and other unions that came together. I eventually, uh, because of my injuries and my labor activities, lost my job and ended up uh, in therapy for about two years and for uh, a serious back injury and shoulder injury. And uh, ended up uh, uh, going broke as my lawyers were getting rich and my doctors were getting rich and uh, decided that I'd go back to school. And uh, I went back to Portland State University and went on with my uh, undergraduate work in art and uh, many other classes. Uh, and finally did my, my master's in fine arts with a minor in international economics. But one of my other studies was in Latin America. My own personal history is my father was born in Panama, and that, uh, that history has always brought me close to issues around Latin America. Um, in 2006, I went to Venezuela to speak as a veteran, uh, um, and to uh, on, uh, a delegation that was actually from Colombia, uh, talking about Plan Colombia and, uh, and how Veterans for Peace is opposed to intervention in, in uh, Latin America and actually all over the world. Uh, so those are issues that are strong to me. But, you know, since uh, Jorge is here, I want to ask him a few questions uh, about what happened. First of all, I'll just let introduce you a little bit. He's, he's a worker who got hurt on the job at GM uh, Bogota, Colombia assembly plant and then kicked to the curb by the U.S.-based and U.S. taxpayer-owned corporation, left without workers' compensation, medical coverage, or job prospects. The workers organized, uh, how do you say that? Asotrecol. Asotrecol. As Asotrecol, um, which is the Association of Injured Workers and Ex-Workers of GM Columbia. Together, they have uh, been in uh, occupation across the the street from the U.S. Embassy since August 2nd, 2011, continuously and peacefully. Uh, and uh, in August uh, 2012, they undertook a three-week hunger strike, seven of them with their mouths sewn shut. They sewed it up. And, uh, and in their continued struggle for justice, Jorge is in the U.S. right now to carry on the fight and to talk with people around the country. Um, one of the things I, I think I asked when you were at the uh, at Malnoa Friends was, have, have you talked with the GM workers here in the U.S.? Una de las cosas que yo pregunté allá el otro día es que si has hablado con los trabajadores de GM aquí en los Estados Unidos. Gracias, Dan, por la invitación. Eh, nosotros hemos tratado de, de iniciar comunicación con el sindicato de la UAW En, en Estados Unidos esperamos poder eh, contactarnos con ellos para para pedirle la ayuda y la colaboración también de, de este gran sindicato. Uh, thanks again for the, the invitation to the show. We have tried to make contact with the UAW. We're, we're still hoping to receive support and to, to be in contact and communication with them. Sí. Go back a little bit. I, I want to ask where you grew up. Quiero saber dónde uh, naciste y dónde creciste. Uh -huh. Yo na eh, cre nací en Colombia, en un pueblo que se llama Garzón Huila. Es al sur de Colombia. Y bueno, allá, allá nací por problemas de la violencia de, 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 de mi región. Eh, nos tocó irnos a vivir a, a la ciudad. Uh, I was born in Colombia. I was raised in a, a place called Huila in the southern part of, of the, the country. Um, due to the violence, we had to move to the city of Bogota, and that's where I grew up from then on. And when you talk about violence, then I'm assuming the violence is dealing with both the government and the drug traffickers? Y cuando estás hablando de la violencia, estoy pensando que este sería del gobierno y también de los uh, narcotraficantes. Y guerrillas también. Y, los, y las guerrillas también. Sí, claro. Pues precisamente es por, por el, conflict, el conflicto interno que tenemos en Colombia. Problemas de, 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 de narcotráfico, de guerrilla, de paramilitares. Y también pues eh, por parte del problema de... de 
de la corrupción de nuestro gobierno. That's exactly right. It's from the internal conflict that we have going on in our country between the, the drug dealers, the, uh, the guerrilla, the paramilitaries, and also from the corruption within our government. As, as a child, uh, uh, what kind of education was he getting at the time? Como un niño, ¿qué tipo de educación estabas recibiendo? Eh, la, la de un niño normal en, en Colombia. Eh, eh, todo mi estudio eh, fue prácticamente en la ciudad, en Bogotá. Y ahí también fue donde pude, eh, a, después de, de, de mi primaria y de mi bachillerato, también estudiar un poco sobre, la, sobre mi carrera. Yo soy soldador profesional. So he had the typical kind of education. Most of it was in Bogotá. Um, after grade school and high school, he went on and uh, studied and be for his career, which is as a welder. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's strange for me, it just, just um, a combination. A good friend of mine was a, a welder and um, uh, was very helpful in, in helping me secure a home here, out here um, and really was sort of my mentor in, uh, in labor education. Ay, pues parece extraño a mí, un gran amigo de mí uh, me ayudó, él también era soldador, me ayudó de, de conseguir mi casa aquí en Portland y también con mucho de mi educación sobre uh, asuntos laborales. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and that also, you're from Colombia, but we have this great river along here called the Columbia River. <laughs> y otra cosa que, que ustedes de Colombia y también tenemos un río Colombia acá. Oh, sí, ya. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one one uh, thing, what, what, was, what did his father do? Uh, ¿Qué hizo tu papá? Eh, mi papá trabajaba en Colombia para, para un banco. Él, él inició como cajero y, y logró pensionarse. My, my father worked as a, as a banker. He started as uh, the person at the front desk and he was able to um, retire with it. Mm -hmm. So was life better at a certain time than, uh, than when it, he was older and started working in the plant? Entonces, uh, tu vida estuvo más fácil en un momento um, que cuando empezaste a trabajar en la planta? Eh, no, mi vida siempre ha sido... <laughs> Un poco difícil, no es tan fácil. Eh, eh, y mi papá pues trabajaba en un banco, pero no, no como, como en área directiva, sino, sino operativa, como cajero. Y, y pues vivíamos eh, una clase media. He says, no, his life's always been pretty difficult. Um, his dad worked in a bank, but not in any sort of administrative role. He was on the floor um, and... He grew, up, he, he grew up middle class. Mm -hmm. uh, how many brothers and sisters? ¿Cuántos hermanos tienes? Somos cuatro. There are four of us. Y cuatro hermanos. ¿Hermanos? Hermanos. ¿Hermanos o hermanos? Sí, un hermano y dos hermanas. Um, one brother and two sisters. Uh -huh. And um, what are they doing now? ¿Y qué están haciendo ellos ahora? Eh, uno es abogado y, y mis otras dos hermanas... Eh, pues amas de, de casa, cuidando sus, sus mis sobrinos. My brother is a lawyer now and my two sisters are both housewives taking care of my, my nieces and nephews. So is your brother helping you with your case? Entonces su hermano está ayudando con su, con su <laughs> no, caso? No, no. no. <laughs> Esto es un, un problema que me metí solo. No, this is a problem okay. I into myself, <laughs> all on my own. Uh, okay. When you, uh, when you started the job, when was it that you started with GM? ¿Cuándo empezaste con GM? Eh, yo empecé a trabajar con General Motors en el año 2004. En 2004. Eh, siempre trabajé como soldador. I always was working as a welder there. Eh, ensamblando los automóviles de, de Chevrolet, eh, de GM en Colombia. Assembling the, autom the Chevys, the automobiles of GM there in Colombia. How big is the plant there? ¿Qué how, es la how is it compared allá? with other plants? ¿Cómo, cómo es la comparación con otras plantas? Sí, es, es, es la empresa automotriz más importante en Colombia. It's the most important auto company in Colombia. Eh, también son líderes en el mercado y, y pues su planta es una planta pequeña para, 
para las plantas a nivel mundial de General Motors. They're also the leading uh, sellers of cars there in Colombia, but their plant in Colombia is smaller compared to the other plants on a worldwide level. Pero pues de todas maneras, eh, para hacer una planta pequeña es una planta muy productiva y, y era, unica, era una de las únicas plantas que en los años de la crisis, en el año 2008 y 2009, eh, prácticamente era una de las pocas plantas a nivel mundial que le representaba ganancias para, para General Motors, que siempre fue productiva. Pero even though it's a small plant, it produces a lot of automobiles. Uh, during 2008-2009 when the financial crisis was going on and, and General Motors was having a lot of trouble all over the world, this was one of the only plants that was still turning a profit. So, um, with the plant, <clears throat> you were working as a welder and then uh, how many people does it employ? ¿Y cuánta gente están trabajando allá? Eh, antes quería explicarte que, que esta empresa eh, lleva en Colombia 56 años, pero antes de 1980 se llamaba eh, Dodge Chrysler y a partir de 1980 fue comprada por, por General Motors y desde el 80 hasta ahora pues estamos fabricando todos los automóviles Chevrolet. Es una planta de más o menos eh, 1800, 2000 trabajadores. Uh, so... This, I want to tell you, this is a plant that's been there since 1956. It started off as a Dodge Chrysler plant. In 1980, it was purchased by GM, um, and it's currently got about um, 1,800 to 2,000 workers. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so what happened to you uh, uh, that caused your injury, and what, is, what are your injuries? Entonces, ¿qué pasó a usted que, que causó las enfermedades, y cuáles son las enfermedades que usted tiene? Eh, sí, eh, indiscutiblemente los problemas que nosotros tenemos son enfermedades de origen profesional eh, porque cuando estábamos haciendo los papeles para firmar el contrato eh, tuvimos que pasar por un proceso de selección eh, entre esos procesos habían exámenes médicos que certificaban que nosotros entrábamos a General Motors con, con un excelente estado de salud y pues que después empezamos a adquirir las enfermedades en el trabajo. Well, the, the, first of all, I just want to say that the injuries that we have are indisputably work-related, they're mm. occupational injuries, because in order to enter the plant, in order to have a contract, we had to go through health examinations to say that we were in a good state of health. Mm -hmm. eh, todos nosotros los trabajadores tenemos problemas de tipo osteomuscular, eh, o sea, problemas como por ejemplo hernias en la columna, eh, problemas de túnel del carpo, tendinitis y tendinosis en, en codos y hombros y problemas de, de rodillas. Son enfermedades que internacionalmente están relacionadas con, con los puestos de trabajo, con, con el trabajo. Uh, so all of our injuries are osteomuscular. They have to do with hernias in the back, um, carpal tunnel in the wrist, problems in the elbow and the shoulders. Um, tendon, tendonitis, tendinesis. Um, these are problems that are internationally recognized mm -hmm. as occupational injuries. Nosotros precisamente hemos podido detectar que, que nuestras enfermedades fueron adquiridas eh, por el acelerado ritmo de la cadena de producción. Eh, también eh, el manejo inadecuado de cargas físicas, de levantamiento de pesos. Y también otro problema muy grave que hemos denunciado es los riesgos ergonómicos que tenemos los trabajadores a, al trabajar en posiciones eh, difíciles y críticas para el cuerpo, mm -hmm. pues que realmente lo que, lo que ha producido este tipo de problemas eh, que tenemos todos. Eh, prácticamente todos tenemos la, el mismo tipo similar de problemas, de enfermedades, es lo mismo en todos los trabajadores de la línea de producción de, de GN en Colombia. So our injuries were due to an accelerated work pace, to uh, lifting things that are too heavy for people to be lifting, um, and to ergonomic positions that are really devastating for the body. Um, you know, all, pretty much all of the workers there at the plant have these injuries, very similar or the same injuries. Uh, it's something that is happening to all the workers. I should let you know that my, my wife works for a uh, auto uh, uh, Auto parts uh, uh, 
warehouse. I don't want to say the name, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, to, to let you know that uh, she's had uh, uh, carpal tunnel, she had sh shoulder surgery, uh, and her body is being wore out uh, just doing this work. Uh, debo decirles que mi esposa trabaja para una compañía automotriz de donde están los partes y por medio de esto tiene enfermedades también de, de tuno de carpo y que está acabando con su salud también. Claro, por supuesto. Pues nosotros hemos detectado precisamente eso, que, que las enfermedades fueron adquiridas allá y que nos parece realmente injusto que las directivas de General Motors en Colombia eh, nos traten a nosotros los trabajadores como si fuéramos eh, prácticamente desechables donde nosotros nos enfermamos y nos despiden por ejemplo en mi caso tengo problemas de hernias en columna eh, túnel del carpo de grado severo en las dos manos y también tengo un hombro lesionado y todas estas enfermedades las adquirí como trabajador dentro de General Motors y no es, in, no es justo que que nos despidan a los trabajadores cuando entregamos nuestra salud eh, para el beneficio de, de, de esta compañía. Yeah, we've detected that all of these injuries are occupational in nature, and we just we don't feel that it's fair for the company to be treating us as though we're disposable in the production line. We uh, we have basically used up our health and then and then been kicked out because of them. In my case, I have hernias in my back and severe carpal tunnel in both of my wrists, as long and along with a an injury to my shoulder. Mm -hmm. So uh, what kind of medical treatment did you get uh, in the beginning and when did it stop? Entonces, ¿qué tipo de tratamiento médico recibiste eh, cuando empezó todo esto y cuándo paró eh, el servicio médico que estabas Exacto. recibiendo? Eh, nosotros eh, tenemos un grave problema porque cuando empezamos a sentir los dolores eh, en, en nuestros puestos de trabajo, eh, nosotros acudíamos al servicio médico que hay dentro de General Motor con médicos pagados por General Motor. Nosotros denunciábamos nuestras enfermedades, eh, pues que íbamos sintiendo el dolor de, de, de las piernas por la parte posterior y, y los dedos dormidos. En mi caso yo iba al centro médico, denunciaba mi problema. Ellos no tuvieron en cuenta esto. Uh, so, you know, we have a very serious problem because when we start to have these injuries, we go to the medical center that's inside of General Motors that has on staff people that are paid by General Motors. And we tell them that we're starting to lose the sensation in our fingers, that our, that our legs are going to sleep, that we're having pains. And, let's see. Entonces, pues, eh, realmente eh, todo esto ha ocasionado... Eh, problemas muy serios porque definitivamente eh, nos ha afectado a nosotros como trabajadores y, y directamente ha afectado a nuestras familias. Por eso hemos iniciado todo, esta, todo este tipo de acciones para, para denunciar y buscar justicia, efectivamente con, con, con el caso nuestro y, y, y de todo lo que hemos podido demostrar de la corrupción de nuestro gobierno y, y que efectivamente... Eh, hemos comprobado el favorecimiento que existen para las multinacionales en nuestro país y también el olvido injusto de los trabajadores so, con todo este problema. So, basically, we go to the, the health center, they're able to detect our injuries, they know who's injured and they're able to let those people go. So this has been the reason, this has been a big problem for our families because we're not able to uh, provide them with food or take care of their needs anymore. And, and for this reason, we've been looking for, for justice We've been able to show the, the favoring of these multinational companies here in our country um, as opposed to the worker. So uh, when did they start um, uh, forming the organization uh, and deciding to, to protest outside the, the embassy? Entonces, ¿cuándo empezaron a formar Azotrecol y, y cuándo decidieron de protestar en frente de la embajada? Nosotros eh, llevamos trabajando eh, casi cuatro años eh, reuniéndonos el, el grupo de personas con todo este problema eh, tratando de empezar a denunciar a buscar las pruebas para acudir al ministerio de, de trabajo en colombia eh, hemos hecho querellas hemos denunciado al ministerio la situación de los trabajadores eh, porque pues en colombia tenemos todas las leyes para la protección de los trabajadores 
pero realmente el problema que tenemos es que no se cumplen las leyes, que no se hace respetar las leyes de los trabajadores y pues eh, vemos el favorecimiento tan grande con, con las multinacionales que se les permite realmente hacer lo que quieran con los trabajadores. So we've been meeting uh, for the last four years as people that are injured, um, coming together, seeing you know how our injuries are similar, uh, bringing together all of the information, all of our evidence, um, denouncing the situation, um, going in front of the labor ministry, um, showing the the favoring of the multinational corporations there in Colombia. Nosotros nos decidimos eh, unir como asociación debido a que a que pues precisamente nosotros eh, siendo más personas eh, podemos demostrar efectivamente que hay relación de nuestras enfermedades con el trabajo que hacíamos dentro de General Motor. We decided to come together because we can definitely show between more of us that the injuries that we have is really it's uh, related to the, the jobs we're doing inside of General Motors. Y pues realmente eso es lo que hemos hecho. Eh, nosotros eh, en este trabajo que llevamos casi de cuatro años, como te comentaba, hemos logrado eh, eh, encontrar un inspector de, del Ministerio de Trabajo en Colombia que era el que eh, se permitía o le permitía a General Motor despedir los trabajadores discapacitados sin ningún tipo de sanción. Eh, este señor ya fue sancionado por eh, 12 meses de inhabilidad en su puesto. So, through this four years of work that we've done, we've already been able to show that one of the labor inspectors that uh, collaborated with General Motors in allowing us to be dismissed um, wasn't following the law. Um, and he said earlier, I forgot to translate this part, he said that the laws in Colombia are written to protect the workers. Uh, the problem is that they're not followed enforced. through. They're not enforced. Este mismo inspector y el abogado de General Motor eh, años atrás ya habían eh, estado involucrados en el despido de otros trabajadores de otra multinacional, eh, so, Labrins. So this same uh, labor inspector, along with the lawyer from General Motors, years earlier had collaborated together to uh, dismiss people from another multinational, Brinks Security. Y también está involucrado en el despido de otros trabajadores de otra multinacional por estar enfermo de 70 trabajadores de, de, de Michelin y Collantas. And also earlier had dismissed 70 workers from, from Michelin um, tires. Mm -hmm. Michelin, uh -huh. for, for being injured. Y, y este inspector del que yo te hablo, eh, este año en julio fue condenado eh, por casi siete años de prisión por también a, a haberse prestado para autorizar os, otros el despido de otros trabajadores de otra empresa muy grande que se llama Los Puertos de Colombia, Fonpol fon, fon por fon col Puertos, perdón. So the same, um, the same labor, uh, labor inspector that I've been talking about was uh, given seven years of prison time mm -hmm. just at the beginning of the summer and that was for doing the same thing with another, with the, the ports, the port workers. Y fue condenado a casi siete años de prisión y en actualidad se encuentra prófugo de la justicia. So he was sentenced yeah. with seven years of, of jail time and he's a fugitive from the law. Lo último que sabemos de, de este inspector es que eh, estuvo uh, hace poco, hace dos meses, tres meses atrás, la última vez que lo vimos, era que estaba en Ginebra, en la, en la Organización Internacional del Trabajo, representando es que a los trabajadores. O sea, es algo, una burla para los trabajadores realmente mm -hmm. que este señor, que nos ha hecho tanto daño, mm -hmm. supuestamente eh, se ha mandado por el ministerio a Ginebra a, 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 a hablar, pues, supuestamente de estos atropellos. So, uh, the last that we heard of this labor inspector, he was actually in Geneva representing us as the workers, which is a real insult that he can be uh, stepping on us in this way and then representing us. Yes. Well, I, we only have about a minute left here, and then uh, I wanted to, to say, you know, for me, I see similar things happening here in the U.S. to workers in the U.S. Um, uh, my own experience of losing my job and um, uh, being active as, as somebody who was injured. Um, I always wonder why it is that um, people come to the U.S. 
seeking justice when I find that there is no justice in the U.S. <laughs> pues en su experiencia este este tipo de cosas están pasando en los Estados Unidos también. Entonces siempre está preguntándose por qué la gente viene a los Estados Unidos buscando justicia cuando aquí no hay justicia tampoco. Claro, realmente es difícil. Eh, nosotros venimos esperanzados en en encontrar eh, eh, la ayuda por, por parte de la UAW y también el objetivo principal nuestro en Estados Unidos es de hablar directamente con, con los ejecutivos de Yen, de tener la oportunidad de mostrarle las pruebas, eh, de hablar realmente de la situación y eso pues hace parte de, 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 de nuestro proyecto de estar en Estados Unidos. Además que eh, nuestro país siempre ha sido un aliado de Estados Unidos y nuestro gobierno realmente eh, únicamente tiene en cuenta lo que diga el gobierno estadounidense y por eso pues nuestra idea es de demostrarle de, de al gobierno de Estados Unidos que no consideramos justo que se practique una doble moral con los trabajadores en Colombia que se nos exija eh, o que se le exija a nuestro país respeto y dignidad para los trabajadores en Colombia, eh, en Colombia eh, exigido en el TLC y pues nosotros vemos con preocupación que esta multinacional como General Motor, que es un icono norteamericano que fue salvada de la crisis en el año 2009 a través de los impuestos de los norteamericanos, eh, que el mismo gobierno norteamericano es prácticamente accionista de esta empresa, pues que sea la misma empresa que nos atropella a nosotros los trabajadores en Colombia. Nosotros creemos que el ministerio, eh, perdón, que el gobierno norteamericano al ser accionista de General Motors, tiene la obligación de, de, de respetar y de hacer respetar los, los trabajadores en Colombia. Eso es más que todo nuestra lucha acá en Estados Unidos. Well, it's definitely so. a difficult thing. We would like to meet with the UAW. We're really hoping that they can help us um, in, in dealing with the situation. We also have the, the hope to be able to sit down with General Motors in their headquarters in Detroit and talk to them about what's going on in Colombia. Um, be able to show them the evidence that we have. Uh, we see it as a, a double standard that the, that the U.S. government is able to demand labor rights through the, uh, the free trade agreement and the labor action plan, and yet a U.S. corporation that was saved by the U.S. taxpayers uh, through taxes is able to step on the rights of workers in the way that it has been able to. Okay. Well, I want to I wanna thank you because I think it's important that it's not just uh, um, seeking justice uh, on, on particular issues, but it's trying to bring awareness so that these corporations, wherever they are, are, are trampling on the basic rights of workers everywhere, and that we need to build solidarity among workers across borders, and I think that's a very important thing, and not just, uh, uh, again, with Latin America, but also with Canada, with uh, Europe, uh, Asia, All workers are suffering in these things, and I want to thank you again for coming, and I want to thank Paige who uh, brought this uh, to our attention here locally. I think it was very important.